Hi everyone, my name is Marty Javers. I'm a pharmacologist uh, in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the UT Health Long School of Medicine in San Antonio. I'm a member of our alcohol biomarker research group, which has two sites, the clinical lab, the NRLC, and the analytical lab, uh, the biological psychiatry analytical lab, where we measure uh, path homologs. Today I'm going to talk about the pharmacokinetics of phosphatidylethanol homologs and also a calculated ratio of 18.1 to 18.2 uh, to see how it changes as a, uh, a, an idea of abstinence uh, during prolonged periods. This is the design of the study. 52, 53 subjects were recruited and agreed to wear a scram ankle monitor for 22 days to measure transdermal alcohol concentration every 30 minutes as a confirmation of abstinence of the participants. Study had three phases, an abstinence phase for the first seven days, an alcohol administration day, one of two doses of alcohol was administered, and then a 14-day abstinence period where blood samples were collected on days 2, 4, 7, 11, and 14 to measure PETH homolog levels. The subjects arrived early in the morning, fasted, and were given a dose of ethanol over a 15-minute period in three divided doses. Blood was collected seven times on the alcohol admin day and once on days 2, 4, 7, 11, and 14. And in each of those samples, uh, both homologs uh, were quantified. This very complicated slide highlights two sources of variability that reduce the accuracy of PETH values to estimate recent alcohol consumption. There's significantly different bioavailability of ethanol and the rate of PETH synthesis among subjects. The two graphs on the left show clear alcohol dose difference in the AUCs of ethanol on alcohol admin day. The range of AUCs was threefold at 0.4 and twofold at 0.8 grams per kilogram in spite of the lack of overlap of the areas under the curve. The two graphs on the right demonstrate considerable overlap of PETH homolog AUCs within and between dose for 18.1 versus 18.2 as well as between doses. Assuming that ethanol bioavailability and PLD concentration in RBCs of individual subjects doesn't change over time, it seems the most accurate use of PETH as a function of alcohol consumption is to track intake over time with multiple measurements within subject. Calculation of ratio of 18.1 to 18.2 uh, I think is a reasonable approach to monitor ethanol consumption over time. When we looked at the data early on, we realized uh, looking at the TAC data, that there were about half of the participants that had breakthrough drinking events during the 14-day abstinence period. You can see that demonstrated on the uh, graph on the right. The green circles represent the ratio of 18.1 to 18.2, which goes down consistent with consumption during the alcohol admin day. And then the circles for all participants goes up steadily during the abstinence period between 2 and 14 days. However, if we separated out the, the abstainers from the drinkers, the light green diamonds on the bottom were the drinkers, and the slope of that increase is significantly lower than the slope of the increase of the ratio levels over time in the true abstainers, uh, and their ratio went from about 1.0 up to 2.4, a much greater increase than the drinkers. 
So this still uh, kept our curiosity up for uh, measuring the ratio. We're part of a contingency management study that's going to give us a really good opportunity to compare changes in the ratio on a weekly basis with path homolog levels on a weekly basis and which is a better index of abstinence. These are data from an individual subject, which is what we'll use in the contingency management study. Subject 1074 was a female who received 0.8 grams per kilogram. You can see the green circles, 18.1 goes up and comes down during the 14 day period. 18.2 goes up at a much greater area under the curve than 18.1, but then during the 14 day abstinence period, it goes down at a faster rate, consistent with an increase in the ratio, which is seen on the tracing of the white diamonds. The diamonds during the alcohol admin day go down consistent with alcohol consumption, and then during the 14-day abstinence period, steadily go up with consistency. However, we saw a tack drinking event, two of them, between days four and seven. So when you compare that to changes in the ratio, my perhaps overly optimistic eye sees a more shallow, uh, a more shallow tracing between days four and seven, consistent with consumption, than the slopes of the tracings between days two and four, seven to 11, and 11 to 14, which are more likely to be uh, relative to an abstinent period. So we decided, we, uh, we did this comparison of all of these time periods. We, we looked at the ratio at zero, two, four, seven, 11, and 14 days, and we compared whether or not there was a TAC identifiable event in any one of those five periods that was consistent with a uh, the with the uh, great a greater uh, ratio at a, after the period than before the period. So, as an example, from day two to four, if a TAC positive event occurred there, the ratio would be greater at day four than great. Um, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. A TAC positive event would be the ratio going down from day two to day four. So the ratio at day four would be less than the ratio at day two. This is a summary of some of the subjects. Uh, we also uh, have a table of all of them, but uh, you wouldn't be able to read it. So the column on the left, uh, the top is the ratios. The, the left column shows the data at two, four, seven, 11, and 14 days. Same for the TAC part of the table below. The white boxes represent no TAC signal and an increase in the ratio in the top part of the table. The flesh-colored boxes represent a match of a TAC drinking event and a decrease in the PETH ratio. For example, subject 1069 went from 1.06 to 0.88 indicating drinking, and we also saw a TAC positive event in the TAC table below the flesh colored box. The blue boxes represent mismatches. These are all the data. You can see there are a lot of mismatches with the blue boxes. There are uh, several matches uh, with the flesh colored box that indicate drinking. And then uh, the white boxes are negative drinking and an increase in the PETH. So in conclusion, when you tally up all the results, we saw 10 out of 260 periods with a TAC positive and a ratio decrease, and 167 periods with a negative TAC signal and a ratio increase. So the tests that matched up agreed 68% of the time. 
32% of the time there was a mismatch between the two tests where attack uh, event period would uh, coincide with the increase in the ratio and vice versa uh, for attack negative and ratio decreased. So uh, we're still interested in the ratio. We're part of a contingency management study and we're going to try to figure out which is more sensitive to see a change in drinking, individual homolog measurements or the ratio. And after considerable discussion with my colleagues, um, we're going to change the ratio that we look at. The small graph on the right shows what happens to the ratio of 18.2 to 18.1. It goes down with, um, with abstinence which makes sense because the PETH levels go down and the drinking level goes down. So uh, and the last thing is to thank the lab staff uh, from Megan at two years and Jesse at 21. Uh, we've got a wonderful group down in the lab and um, want to make sure and give them high credit. So thank you for listening and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.